bonus episode. Are you ready? I'm ready. Hey, we have a cool announcement to make. We do. Right. Do a we? Couple cool, yeah, we do. Okay. Here's a cool announcement. Okay. I'm not sure if you're aware. You're about to have a baby. Pastor Byron is about to welcome his second daughter, yes. Ruth, into the world. I'm going to be a dad again. Again. Shout out to Ashley. Yeah. For bringing this baby. Yes. So. <laughs> for doing all the hard work. I oh. think that's why they call it labor. Fair enough. Because I had the fun part. She has the hard work. <laughs> Facebook Live. Now. <laughs> so, in, in honor yeah. of Ruth being brought into the world, you're mm-hmm. going to be taking a couple weeks off. I will, yes. A few weeks off from preaching. Yeah. Right? So we're going to have some guest speakers. It's going to be great. I can't wait. Oh, yeah. We have um, some awesome, awesome guest speakers lined up uh, for this. Uh, my pastor is going to be here. Uh, his name's um, Lance Faulkner. He's the pastor of Bridgepoint. Fellowship Church in Bridge City, um, an amazing pastor, great man of God, uh, an amazing church. He's going to be preaching first, and then we have Jacob Jester. He is uh, a church planter with the Church Multiplication Network. He planted Compel Church out in Phoenix, Arizona. However, he has just accepted a position as a missionary in Africa. Hallelujah! And so he's going to be doing a lot of work. And so we have uh, Jacob Jester. He's going to come in, and that guy, man, he preaches fire. Like seriously, like every time he preaches, it's like a Kanye album. It is straight fire. Like that's exactly what it is. Um, Relevant. I, I heard him uh, preach at CMN events and I was like, I got to get this guy at our church. So he's going to be here. And then my mentor, Kendall Revis, is actually going to be preaching here as well. He's the church planting director for the Assemblies of God in South Texas. Uh, just super Yoda smart. Uh, and so he's going to be here. So we have three uh, amazing um, Bible teachers that have meant a lot to me, made a great impact in my life. They're coming to serve our church. So during those three weeks, please, if you're a part of Redemption, like be here. And what I don't want to ha- have happen, because uh, this has happened before, yeah. is whenever I'm out of the pulpit, people think, oh, Byron's not there, so I don't have to go. Like that's not loving your church well. Um, and, and so these men are coming to serve our church they're giving me a break because we're having a baby. Let's honor uh, them. Yeah, and yeah. let's honor let's honor our church. Yeah. And it's still God's word, so yeah. please be a part of it. Uh, we're not going to want to miss out. No, it reality. is it yeah. is going to be amazing. I know each one of them have gotten a word from God that's for our church, and so it's going to be incredible. So I'll be out for those three weeks, and then starting in the month of December, we're going to do a four week sermon series over the spiritual gifts. One of the things I get asked a lot is, what is my spiritual gift or what is a spiritual gift? In 1 Corinthians 12, 1, the Apostle Paul, he lays out um, the miraculous gifts and he says, I'm writing to you regarding this because I do not want you to be ignorant. And a lot of Christians are ignorant when it comes to the role of the Spirit and what their spiritual gifts are. So we don't want you to be ignorant. We're going to teach you about the spiritual gifts, four-week series starting in December. Tis the season. Tis the season for giving, but spiritual <laughs> gifts as well. So, yeah, that's kind of where we're And headed. receiving. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be so. great. So during that time, we're not going to be, you know, we won't have any content to do the Rundown podcast. Sure. Right? So yeah. that's where you come in. That's where we need your help. A call to arms, guys. We yes. would like to know what have been your favorite sermons that we've done in the series of Mark, in the simple gospel, yeah. right? So it can be anything back from when we started in April mm-hmm. 2018 to, till, I would say, the past couple months, Yeah, right? Till, till next week. One that we haven't covered. Till Sunday. Till right. this Sunday. Right. Jesus and hell is this next sermon. Get so, ready for that. Yeah. I think that's uh, 39 sermons. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So all the way from there, guys, let us know what your favorite sermons have been. So what has been your favorite sermon in the gospel of Mark? I thought you'd never ask. My favorite, and it was, you know, partly because of the message itself and partly because of the timing of mm-hmm. my, uh, my spiritual walk as I was becoming a Christian. I remember, I think it was, I was a few weeks into coming into church. I was still standing in the back, crossing my arms during worship, kind of not wanting to be around. Yeah. And the sermon was Jesus and the Pharisees, which mm-hmm. means Jesus gets in a fight. Jesus gets in a fight. So as a martial artist myself... Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it's what I do for a living on the other side. Mm-hmm. I teach and train Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Jesus gets in a fight. I was like, huh? Yeah. What do you mean? So that message ended up being super relevant to my life because it kind of showed me, okay, this is how Jesus deals with conflict, mm. right? This is, it really helped me in my walk and not being so, uh, I don't know, 
where does violence really fit in as a Christian? It was mm-hmm. pretty convicting for me and yeah. really, really. So was really Jesus useful. like a weakling? He was just like a little feeble-bodied guy, like, oh no, y'all made fun of me. <laughs> Turns out, not at all. Jesus was a savage. Yeah, Jesus was a savage when needed yeah. and in the right way, the yeah. most righteous way. Saints and savages. I like that. Yeah. Band name called yeah. it. There you go. There we go. Yeah. So <laughs> that was. Probably. So Jesus got in a fight with the Pharisees. I yeah. remember that one. Mm-hmm. That one was a lot of fun to preach. I felt like you were staring at me the whole time, too. Like, I was just beating you up yeah, the whole time. Yeah. Uh, uh. Jesus gets in a fight with Trevor. And then I turn around and my hands are up during worship. I'm like, yeah. what is going on? Oh, no. Here comes the Spirit. Yeah, yeah. so that's cool. Um, I, one, one that I remember a lot, I think my favorite one um, was Jesus preaches a sermon out of Mark 4. Uh, and... I love that one because I got to talk about something that's important to me, which is the priesthood of all believers. Uh, And Jesus basically is preaching to a large crowd of people. And he's been there for like three days preaching them. And he um, basically tells a couple of parables. And so, and it's really talking about the importance of the word of God in our hearts. And so I got to explain like, how we practically listen and apply sermons to our lives. And that was really, um, it meant a lot to me because um, I think a lot of people listen to the messages that I preach, but they don't actually apply them. Right. And Mark 4, 24 says, the one who has more will be given. The one who has not even what he has will be taken away from him. Uh, With the same measure you use, it will be measured unto you. And if you hear a word and you don't apply it, well, then you're going to be held accountable. And that's a really scary thing because because you're held accountable for what you've learned. And if you don't apply what you've learned, that's, well, on him. that's going to be on you. Yeah. And I feel as a pastor, a deep burden that so many people have information about God, but without application, it's really going to only lead to greater judgment. Right. And that's a really scary thing. That's mm-hmm. something that weighs heavy on me. I remember that. So it was just really beneficial, I think, to be able to share that really practical wisdom to the church, but also at the same time that I don't want people in our congregation to rely on me to do the work for them. Right. I think so many people come into church and say, well, I don't read my Bible during the week, but I do go to church every Sunday, so the pastor's gonna do it for me. And I don't believe that's true. I believe you have the Bible, you have the Holy Spirit, you have a brain, and I believe that you're smart. And so you can go ahead and do this. Now, so for a long, long time ago, there was a man, um, <clears throat> his name was Martin Luther, and he is the one who brought up the, the, the priesthood of all believers. So basically, I'm not saying the Catholic Church is this way today, but the way the Catholic Church was back then was that no one is smart enough to understand the Bible, so you have to come and listen to the priest. You couldn't read it on your own. You couldn't study it on your own. You couldn't read Latin. Nobody had access to it. You had to come and listen to the priest, and the priests were the ones. And the problem is, just like the Pharisees, the priests, they were going beyond the Bible, and they were making up all these things, and it was really um, holding people down. And then Martin Luther's like, hey, this is not the way it's supposed to be. I want everyone to read the Bible for themselves. And as they got the Bible in people's hands with the printing press and Gutenberg and Martin Luther team together, it started the Protestant Reformation. And it all came from people learning how to read the Bible. My fear is that for us, and this is what I said in that sermon, my fear is for us is that in the American church, we're heading back into a pre-Reformation because so many people are relying on pastors to teach the Bible instead of actually learning how to read the Bible for themselves. And so that section is very, very, very important to me because I want everyone in our church to have a love and a hunger for the Word of God and then also to be able to apply God's Word to their life. So that's my favorite one. Right. A motivational speech can only go so far. Yeah. Right? The rest is up to you. For sure. Mm -hmm. Um, If I could have one more bonus one. Hit me. Uh, I really liked the one where um, Jesus cleanses a leper. Me too. I forget about that one mm-hmm. a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, when when the man says, uh, when there's a difference between being willing and able, I remember that part. I really like the the cleansing the leper part. Yeah. That yeah. one was good. That was really early too. That was right when I first started coming. Was it? Yes. So it was oh, right. that was Very, good. very relevant. Same that was with good. when they had to lower the man down from the ceiling. Oh yeah. Jesus forgives sins. What a that great, good. great illustration that was. Yeah. yeah. So guys, we want to know. What are your favorite sermons? What series? is your favorite sermons? sermon? Yeah, in, in the, the series, series of simple Mark. Gospel, the simple gospel, the simple gospel. 
the, the <laughs> we're just like talking over each other and it's rambling but you yeah. guys know what we mean yeah so go ahead um send us uh, a dm in our redemption church instagram so um jump over to instagram if you're watching on youtube or listening on itunes or watching on facebook live jump over to the redemption instagram give us a follow at redemption bmt and then send us a message let us know what your favorite uh, simple gospel sermon has been and we're going to pick three of them and then over the next three weeks we're going to be doing bonus rundown episodes over the simple gospel what your favorite episode is i'm super so, excited i'm really super excited, excited. and if you haven't had a chance guys go back and just listen to the archives that we have yeah right kind of weed out see which one was your favorite which one really stuck with you and we're going to talk about it yeah you can do that at redemptiontx.com yeah or and... go to our facebook church connect page join the group let us know shoot us a message on that something any way you can contact with us we'd love to answer yeah yeah so what are you going to be doing while i'm gone i'm gonna be here you will yeah yeah except I, i'm leaving one weekend i'm leaving the 23rd for a tournament in Alabama. Uh -huh. But other than that, I will be here. You're going to go fight some Pharisees? I'm going to try to fight some Pharisees. I have to look at them as Pharisees in order for me to win. You're going to choke them out. Yes. Like, ah. Right. These rules are man made. Yeah. Yes. This is the. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I'll be doing. But so I'll be there the first two weeks of our guest preachers. I cannot wait. Yeah. And then I'll be missing one. But mm -hmm. <clears throat> we'll knock these podcasts out. Right. Um, super excited about it. Yeah, and yeah. I'm excited because Ruth's going to be here. So I've been looking forward to her coming for nine months. A brand new baby Ellis. So, yeah. I'm, it's going to be great. It's going to be good. I'm going to have a house filled with women. It's going to be Hallelujah. Awesome. Hallelujah. I'm, 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 me and Shiner are going to hold it down. <laughs> Not Shiner's. Shout out to Shiner, his dog. My dog's name yeah. is Shiner. So, um, cause, I love that cause, dude. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, so we're going to be doing that. I'm excited. I'm going to take a few weeks off, get refreshed. So... Um, so yeah, I think that about does it for this little bonus episode of yeah. the rundown. Let us know guys again, what your favorite sermons have been yep. and we will see you then. Okay. We have one more. How many more sermons? One. We have one more episode of the rundown. And then after that, it's up to you. It's up to you. A call the future of the rundown is in your hands. <gasps> Let us know. We'll be happy and glad to serve you. Can't wait. So, so right. grace and what am I supposed to say? Come on, dude. Grace and goodbye, guys. Grace and peace out. Grace and peace out. All right, man.